Hi, my name is Michael Smithson, and this is my first foray into uh, into animated digital art. Collider Painter is a an abstract painting program, and it paints pictures by copying rectangular regions from a JPEG file called color.jpg, and and then printing them to the screen on a black canvas. I wrote Collider Painter in Python using the uh, Pygame library, and I used CX Free to compile it into a standalone application that runs in Windows. As you can see, um, uh, there's a kind of a pattern to what Collider Painter does, and uh, but the pattern isn't uh, isn't completely regular. It's got it's got some randomicity in it, and randomicity really is the key to making these sorts of paintings. Collider Painter doesn't repeat itself. If you start it over again with the same settings, then you'll see that it begins in a different part of the canvas, and the uh, the motion is not identical to what it produced before, although, of course, there's a family resemblance to the picture that it creates if you leave the, the, the settings um, the same. And uh, so what happens is that the two brushes in this case that are uh, that are rendering the uh, the image sort of wander around each other um, and gradually drift mostly to the to the right and they um, and they gradually fill up the canvas. Now you can change Collider Painter settings. There's uh, you can change the number of brushes. You can also change the brush uh, width, its thickness. You can change how fast it moves, and you can change how fast it rotates. You can also alter the window dimensions, the height, uh, and, the, and the width. The only trick is that you have to keep the format of the numbers the same, otherwise my poor code gets confused. But if you get stuck, you can always take the original settings and paste them back in if you can't get, Py uh, if you can't get Kaleido Painter to run. Okay, so I've changed some settings here. Uh, I've changed the brush dimensions and, uh, and how fast it moves. If you save those settings and then launch Collider Painter, you'll find that you get a very different sort of picture. In this case, we've got a really rapidly moving brush. You can see the rectangles that it's laying down on the canvas. And this is producing a much more sort of regular looking um, kind of motion. If you decide you don't like these particular settings, you can experiment. You can simply quit the program, open the file called nbrush.txt back up again, and, uh, and alter things. So let's say we decide we're going to slow the rotation velocity way down, and we'll leave all the other settings the same. What will happen is that we'll get a very slowly moving brush now. It moves, kind of drifts along. Um, it does rotate, but it rotates very slowly. And you can see that it, as a result, it's leaving a kind of a drippy, almost watercolory looking uh, trail across across the canvas. It's still laying down rectangles, but it's laying down the rectangles so close to one another that they blend in. And uh, as a result, you get the effect of a kind of a brush being moved along whose colors are wet, or they look like they might be wet, they kind of run together, and the changing as the brush moves along um, over different regions of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the JPEG file from which it's getting these, uh, this, these rectangular regions. If you wait for a while, then this picture will develop. And sometime later, it may look like uh, it may look like this. Collider Painter does a pretty good job of some of the things that abstract expressionism is all about. So it treats color and surface as just sort of abstract properties and manipulates them uh, in a way that generally results in, in a pretty well balanced kind of canvas. You can see that there are 
uh, there aren't too many regions that are um, that appear out of place. Uh, it does look almost as if somebody might have painted this, as if uh, there might have been a human being involved. Now, that's partly due to the kind of random motion that I've uh, programmed into Kaleido Painter. It's something like uh, the way that um, uh, that somebody painting an abstract painting uh, might might do. Now you can replace the color .jpg file with your own file. So I've got a, a mono print here that I did, and I'm going to get Kaleido Painter to uh, to take rectangular regions off of that. So I'll just rename the old uh, uh, color .jpg file a different name, and I'll rename my new file color .jpg so that Kaleido Painter thinks that that's the file from which it should read. And you can see that we get a very different looking picture from what we had before. We've got, of course, a black and white image. And all I'm doing is I'm getting it to splatter rectangular regions of that image all over the canvas here. And uh, you can see that as it goes on, it picks up different regions, different parts of it, and as a result, creates different drum beats of light and dark. You can play around with uh, I found playing around with black and white images like this is really educational, but you can really use any kind of image you want. So I got one here that's just polka dots, and I've done pretty much the same sort of thing with it as I did with my uh, black and white monoprint. You can see it's now creating this sort of glittery, um, geometric, abstract picture of a kind that um, uh, that perhaps some of the op art people might have got interested in doing it. They had the sort of technology at the time. Whatever Kaleido Painter does with your image depends entirely on the settings that you use. So in this case, I've done something like uh, what uh, I did earlier with, um, with the original uh, color.jpg. I've got a very slow moving large brush that drifts slowly around the canvas and smears the colors from that file uh, all over the place. You can use photographic images. Uh, they can be very, very effective. Uh, in this case, I've just done a very simple, um, slow rotating but fast moving brush that takes literally uh, squares out of that, uh, out of that um, uh, montage of faces and pastes them all over the canvas here. So you get, you get this kind of a uh, very slowly rotating set of repeated faces. There's really very little limit to what you can do. Or that it's limited really by your own imagination, your own intentions. And you really can take just about any image and do some very, very interesting things with it, depending upon the settings that, uh, uh, that you try. So that's about it for me. You can acquire Kaleido Painter if you'd like for free um, via my art, uh, art website. And thanks very much for watching this. Bye now.